à un thème à 19 h 15 19 h 15 Donc ça veut dire qu'à 19 h tous les plans doivent être prêts. Ok, allez. On y va, on y va, please. Lançons. C'est parti. Demande à l'avance. 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 Demande à l'avance.
the uh, French newscast, where they had windows to illustrate their news stories. And I said, even if it's rudimentary, I think I can do it. And I got my editor and we did a number of uh, experiments on the editing table. And I said, I can shout Eureka, meaning I found it, you know. And I went into the studio very confident that I will hit the pot, all right. And believe you me, that evening I hit it. Because even my general manager at the time, Professor Jeve Mendoza, was very, very, very impressed because he saw a completely different newscast. So that is what I did. And today we have headline news. I impose headlines on the news. French industrialists and other French businessmen are pleased or are pleaded with to invest in Cameroon. The presidential couple is in France on an economic offensive. So I proposed this in the newsroom. There were little recalcitrant, they were dragging feet. They were not very prepared for it, but I was lucky. I was lucky that I got um, a certain Charles Ndongo presenter at the time, who today is our general manager. I got Eric Chinje, who at the time was um, a top newscaster on television. These two were instrumental in making headline news a reality on television. I will not forget a little jingle which I did to mark the year 2000. Remember, 2000 was like, was like a magic year. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Some said the world was going to stop. Most people were just apprehensive of the year 2000. You know, and I was uh, instructed by the director general at the time to conceive what should be the passage from the years 1990s to the 2000. Okay, and I was very glad that that evening when uh, 2000 struck uh, that beautiful jingle which I did uh, graced uh, the air on CRT. It was a little slogan which I proposed to the Director General Amadou Vamoke when we were launching our new program season in 2011. That was just when I took up office as uh, Director of Programs and Production. I said, why not? CRTV must have a slogan. We had had one before. CRTV, your window on the world. I thought that was a little um, too uh, boastful. CRTV, I said, how can CRTV be your window on the world? So I said, let us look for something more catchy. Let's look for something more democratic. Let's look for something that is more seductive. And that is how I tried a few concepts which I had on my table and um, like dice. I diced it and what came out of uh, the cup was uh, CRTV, the heart of the nation. TV, the heart of the nation. I should say that um, it was such an honor for me to have been designated the Pioneer Director of Programs and Production. That was way back in 2010. I was a little scared because when I looked at the volume of that department, it was a department that had 285 men and women. It was a department that was created with five sub-departments. I did. I did for five good years, from 2010 to 2015. Thank God. And what did I do? I told myself the first thing was to beef up what we had as our local production base. I saw the records and I looked at what my predecessor left behind. CITV was barely grouping with about 35% of local productions. I thought that was too low. Okay, and I said, why not whip up interest in producers, potential producers, journalists and producers alike, even technicians. Why not whip up this interest in our house and come up with concepts that could build full-fledged programs. I chose the programs depending on our environment. I chose the programs depending on our human activity in Cameroon. I chose the programs depending on actuality news. I'll give you an example. We had a program called Cameroon.com. Cameroon.com was, like you would already imagine, had to talk about new technology. Our main and primordial role is to educate, to entertain, and inform. I looked at the cultural domain. I said, why not? Let us create some big programs that would come back on our culture. I thought that the World This Week had lived its time because the World This Week was talking about international news. But I said, let this international news be topical. If, it's, it's, if it is topical, I think it will get to attract more viewers. I'm also glad to say that throughout my tenure of office in that department, I made sure 
that every year I developed a program schedule which we try to respect uh, to a very large extent. I believe in destiny because I think that um, what we are and what we become are all things that are designated and designed by God. Because very early in my professional life, I started managing little things. I remember my first director, Mr. Jean Vincent Chilian. He made me responsible very early. I used to draw up rosters for uh, news production, for example. I used to draw up rosters for the occupation of the studios. All of these little things started preparing me to be a manager. Because in drawing up rosters, I had to consult people. I would consult producers. When do you want to occupy the studio? When is your program going to be recorded? Is it live? Is it late broadcast? And so on. All of these things put me on my feet and I learned not only to manage uh, material, I also learned to manage people. But I also made sure that I took care of administrative work. And by that I mean making sure that my staff is working, making sure that most of the productions that, are, that were earmarked to go out of, on the field, they did go out on the field. Those who had to go out on mission, uh, script girls that had to work for this or that program. And like I say, I was prepared long, long ago for that. I became sub-director in CRTV in 2000. And I think at that level of management, at that level of responsibility, it gave me a full idea of what probably my future, like I said, uh, Destiny has its way of uh, uh, managing us. That position which I handled for five years, I think prepared me solidly to occupy the positions of Director of Production first in 2005 and later Director of Programs and Production uh, five years later in 2010. The day that everything went right was the day, I think in 2007, if my memory doesn't fail me, when I directed the Mass said by Pope Benedict XVI at the Omnisport Stadium here in Yaoundé. I cannot tell you how I felt sitting on the command post and directing a program that was beamed around the world to about four billion people. I thought this was a feat and it didn't come easy at all. It took many, 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 many months of planning because there was a papal team that had come to Cameroon long before that papal visit to discuss with CRTV on how uh, the production was going to be carried out. And I worked with a team of experts from Italy and I thought that uh, at the end of that working session, I was well equipped to direct that mass. At the end of the day, when I got a call from the chief, the communications chief of the Vatican, he was calling me from the Hilton Hotel where he was monitoring my production and he told me, Bob, well done. You made it. It was great. I can't tell you how I felt. I felt great. And I will not tell you a lie. It was from that day on that I told myself, Bob, I think this is the point where the applause is loudest. Don't you think that you should start quitting the stage? Everything just went well. My cameramen were all good. They gave me all the kinds of shots that I wanted. I remember when the Papa Mobile was driving in from the tunnel into the stadium, all right? I told the cameraman, please get me a close-up shot of the Pope inside the Papa Mobile. I want to see what is inside the Papa Mobile. And when I had that shot, I remember how the Pope looked at the cameraman and had a little smile on his face. These are the kinds of things that any producer would like to do. When was the day that everything went wrong? It was a newscast. We started that newscast, and like an ill-fated plane that had to crash, 10 minutes after we started that newscast, we had to close it, simply because the machines were not responding anymore. I remember it was Julius Wame who was the anchor. He had started the newscast uh, like he normally knew how to do it. It was so beautifully started, you know, but like I said, 10 minutes down the line, all the machines just shut down. We couldn't play out any feed. The studio was still on, it was fine. We had, the lighting was good, the cameras were still on. I had all the pictures on my control monitor. Unfortunately, we had no feeds coming in from the editing. The essence of a newscast was all defeated. So I, through Intercom, just had to inform Julius to stop babbling on the air because I don't think there'll be any magic tonight. We'll have to close the newscast.
Each time I've gone into the studio, I've always tried to do things differently. I've always tried to add a little shot to my production. I've always tried to give another angle to the kinds of shots that my cameraman pro proposed to me, just so that in the end, my viewers see something that's a little different. I always want to change. They say variety is the spice of life. Uh, if we cannot create that variety on television, where else can we do so? And I believe that uh, for the younger generation that followed me up, uh, that saw and looked into my Ngomba bag to see exactly what I was doing, I think they will pick it up effortlessly. They will get it very quickly and I think they will do, if not the same, like uh, Robert Ekukole, they will do even much better. Bob is one of the most competent directors uh, CRTV has ever had. Uh, he added to, let's say, the artistic aspect of directing an intellectual touch, uh, which put his productions, his program, above the others. Monsieur Ekokole, c'est un homme qui aime le travail bien fait. Et je vous assure, ceux qui le connaissent savent que comme il aime bien s'y mettre, c'est comme ça qu'il aime que le travail soit bien fait. Très rigoureux dans le travail. Vraiment, quand je dis rigoureux, très rigoureux, très pointu dans ce qu'il fait. Il me prend un jour comme son assistant pour les matchs de foot. Puis je viens, je regarde comment il travaille une fois au deuxième match. Il me dit, bon voilà, tu seras mon assistant. Mais il ne me dit pas qu'il ne va pas venir au stade. Je l'appelle à quelques minutes de la prise d'antenne. Il me dit, j'arrive. Et puis, il n'arrive pas, on prend l'antenne, je commence à travailler, je fais le match. Et lui, il est à la maison, il me regarde à partir de la maison. Et à la fin du match, euh, il m'appelle, il me dit, euh, c'était pas mal, voilà, il faut corriger ceci, il faut corriger cela. Et voilà comment il m'a fait euh, me mettre dans les matchs. Uh, again, while we worked with him as director of uh, Halo, and then later on director of productions, then director of programs and productions, we discovered a great manager who understood the staff, who could take care of the staff, who you know, was never biased. You know, um, Mr. Kukle never treated you because you are from this, you're from A or from B, from the Northwest or from the Southwest, you're Francophone, you're from the East. No, Mr. Kukle treated everybody based on what you can do. And he showed love to everybody based on what everybody could, could do. As a great manager, he was, he, was, he was a little open. He was very friendly, always eager to bring in new ideas for us to experiment during our work and it made me also to love the job and uh, we used to actually sit together and dream certain actions that we like to realize together and when we come on the editing table he will tell us to try it out and we'll try it out if it works well if it doesn't work we'll say okay next time we'll do better Mr. Kukola is the type of person who goes for what he actually wants in his profession. He, can't, he wants the best. Then he works towards the best. And since he's the kind of person who is easygoing, he creates relationships very easily, he will get his material, get people who will give him the information that he needs for his production. He will get the, the archives that he needs when he wants, and that is how he will build up his program and it will become interesting when it goes on the air. Voilà vos, vos collaborateurs. Aujourd'hui, vous le voyez là, n'est-ce pas C'est un intervenement jamais vu réalisé. Donc, vous faites, vous ça, vous. faites ça pour moi. Parce que j'aimerais que quand je sors d'ici, je sois satisfait, je peux même pleurer. You Joie. cannot be a good producer director if you do not know how to manage people. You are the head of a team, and I always liken the job of a producer director to, um, 
an ally pilot. You must be able to be diplomatic when you have to be. You must know how to be firm when you have to be. You must also, also know how to be lighthearted because this is what makes the team tick. When they feel that you feel what they feel, when they feel that you are part of them, when they feel you eat what they eat, and you make or crack the jokes that they crack, I think that all of this makes for a good atmosphere within the production team. Your intellect must be sharp. You must think fast. You don't have time to start reflecting on this or that. You must have visualized what you want to do, you know, so that at the end, when you are on the editing table and you have to play back your edited piece, you tell yourself, does this reflect the dream that I had before going out to shoot my film? As a manager, I will simply refer to him as that man who was always put behind his title as a director and brought forth in front of him this humble part of him as a father. He has been a father to many and a director to a few. Le travail au quotidien avec lui, c'est toujours bien passé, toujours, toujours. Parce que je n'ai pas euh, un boss devant moi, je n'ai pas un patron, j'ai plutôt un père. Parce que c'est comme ça qu'il s'est toujours comporté avec moi, comme un papa. Tous les jours, des conseils, même dans le travail, on trouvait toujours une minute pour rire. L'environnement de travail au quotidien est chaleureux, jovial. Quand tu rentres le soir, tu as déjà envie d'être là le lendemain. Peter Kukola is married. I'm lucky to have uh, three beautiful children, Emmanuel, Sandra, and Leanna. I knew that uh, my working life wouldn't be different, so I tried to give a lot of premium to my weekends because I knew during the week I'll be occupied in the studio, I'll be occupied uh, on the field. So I, 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 I tried to make my weekend full for my family. At that time, I had very young children that were still young, so I made sure that on Saturdays, I could take them go out swimming, I could take them go out to a restaurant on Sunday. I could just hang around with them so that they feel my presence. It wasn't easy sometimes, but the moments I used to come really late, very, very late, and um, I think my family missed me. And well, they say sometimes there are some sacrifices you make when you have the kind of profession that we choose to have. He's a workaholic. <laughs> I would say that he's a perfectionist. He is absolutely consumed with work. He's also someone who is passionate about how he looks. If he wasn't um, the workaholic, the um, knowledgeable, wise person that he is, I would think that he's vain because he spends so much time uh, on his looks, from his head to his toe. In my life, I've always left tomorrow for tomorrow. I know sometimes my wife would not agree with me, but that is how I was made. I don't uh, stress out myself on so many things. My wife would tell you that I sleep very well. There is not a single day that I will not sleep at least eight hours a night. I always sleep well, all right? And I think that uh, whatever work I would have done the previous day, whatever circumstances I would have had, difficult, stressful, annoying the previous day. By the time I spend eight hours on my bed, I always get up refreshing. I always get up uh, fine and good to start a fresh new day. Most people who know me, they know me with a smile. I was born that way. My mother told me that I always laughed when I was, when I was a baby. And uh, strangely, I grew up that way. I don't know how not to laugh. I don't know how not to smile. So midnight, and believe you me, when the hand of my clock ticked a few seconds after midnight, that's when it dawned on me that I just turned 60.
I still uh, see myself uh, useful uh, in private, just like in public. Uh, I'll still be there to give uh, the young generation the assistance they need as much as I can. Uh, of course, uh, when you go on retirement, there are many other things or other activities that come into your life. Yes, I'll try to manage all of that, but I don't think I would ever turn my back to CRTV that gave me all that. I am today, you know. So I think on a purely moral standpoint, I have that obligation to assist CRTV. Also, I'm going away uh, very satisfied, very satisfied that uh, I've given my all, I've given my best. I thank God that in 31 years, I didn't have any setback that kept me off work. I've worked consistently and continually for 31 years. Mm -hmm.